Welcome back. We are going to talk about the fact that counts count. When we count the cases in each category of a categorical variable, the counts are not the data, but something we summarize about the data. The category labels are the what, and the individuals counted are the who. And then the actual counts are a summary. The actual data themselves, for instance, here we've got the shipping method and then the number of purchases. Those numbers, those are the counts, and those are a summary. The actual data would be a whole bunch of um, the words, you know, ground, second day, overnight, depending on what different individuals had chosen. So it might be ground, 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 second day, ground, 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 second day, overnight, ground, second day, ground, overnight, ground, ground, ground. It's just going to be a list of the actual shipping methods. And so you can see why that's hard for people to even absorb, so they summarize it into the counts. When we focus on the amount of something, we use counts differently. For example, Amazon might track the growth in the number of teenage customers each month to, uh, to forecast CD sales. The why. Okay, so that's the point. It's to forecast CD sales, and so they want to track the growth of the number of teenage customers each month. The what is teens, the who is months, and the units are number of teenage customers. So in this case, for each month, one of the what's is a count. Okay, so you have to be careful with counts. In the previous example there, the counts were summaries. In this case, counts are actually variables and the units are number of teenage customers. So you really have to think about the why. Okay, identifying identifiers. Identifier variables are categorical variables with exactly one individual in each category. For example, your social security number is an identifier variable because that one single number is associated with you and only you. ISBN numbers for books and such, FedEx tracking numbers, all are examples of identifier variables. Don't be tempted to analyze identifiable, uh, identifier variables. Be careful not to consider all variables with one case per category, like year, as an identifier variable. The why will help you decide how to treat identifier variables. The purpose of identifier variables is identification, so you have to consider that. We need the who, what, and why to analyze data. But the more we know, the more we understand. When and where give us some nice information about the context. For example, values recorded at a large public university may mean something different than similar values recorded at a small private college. How the data are collected can make the difference between insight and nonsense. Example, results from internet surveys are often useless. Okay, um, we've already talked about sampling. The problem with internet surveys is that typically they are voluntary response samples. First of all, um, let me even back up one step, it leaves out everybody who, who isn't online, which granted, most people are, but those who aren't tend to have common characteristics. Perhaps they're older than most, perhaps they're poorer than most, so there, there definitely could be differences of opinions of the people who don't have inter who don't use the internet um, versus people who do. Second of all, they are voluntary response surveys, and so remember, people with stronger opinions are more likely to answer voluntary response surveys, especially people with strong negative opinions. So those results are pretty useless. It might be fun for people to do, but it is by no means a scientific poll much different than a Gallup poll or Pew poll or a Zoggy poll where efforts have been made to have a good random sample. The first step of data, any data analysis should be to, th to examine the W's. This is a key part of the think step of any analysis. And make sure that you know the why, who, and what before you proceed with your analysis. So what can go wrong? Don't label a variable as categorical or quantitative without thinking about the question you want it to answer. Just because your variable's values are numbers, don't assume that it's quantitative. 
For instance, if you ask people at a race, what place did you come in? And they've said first, second, third, or fourth. That's not really quantitative. That's more that, that ordinal case. And most frequently, that would be used as a, as a category. It's not really a, a specific quantitative measure. Or, um, you know, anyway, that's a good example. Always be skeptical. Don't take data for granted. Data are information in a context. The context is huge. The W's help with the context. We must know the who, the cases, the what, the variables, and why to be able to say anything useful about the data. We treat variables as categorical or quantitative. Categorical variables identify a category for each case. Quantitative variables record measurements or amounts of something and must have units. Some variables can be treated as categorical or quantitative depending on what we want to learn from them. Okay, here we've got an example like the kinds of problems you'll be doing with um, all kinds of different scenarios. For the following description of data, identify the W's and the 1H if you can. Specify for each variable whether its use indicates that it should be treated as categorical or quantitative. And for any quantitative variable, identify the units in which it was measured. Or note that units were not provided. Alright, so here's an example. The Gallup poll conducted a representative telephone survey of 1,180 American voters during the first quarter of 1999. Among the recorded results were the voters' region, northwest, south, etc., age, party affiliation, and whether or not the person had voted in the 1998 midterm congressional election. Okay, so let's identify our W's and H, the who, what, when, where, why, and how. The who are the 1,180 Americans um, who were surveyed. Some pe sometimes people make the mistake of thinking it's the who conducted the study. That's not it. It's uh, describing the cases. Okay, so it's 1,180 American and technically American voters if you wanted to be more specific. What? These are our variables. So it's what was uh, recorded what, uh, among the reported results. That's giving you a hint that the variables are following. So region, age, political affiliation, and whether or not the person voted in the 1998 midterm congressional election. When? It's the first quarter of 1999. Where? Um, it says American. That means United States. So United States. Why? Well, for the Gallup poll. For no other explanation was given, but at least we know that it was whatever the Gallup poll was interested by for, for their purposes. And how, let's say it was a telephone survey. Okay, so for each variable, we need to list it and give the type. And if it's quantitative, we need to give the units. So the first variable was region, and that would be categorical. Our second variable was age, and that would be quantitative. And so a reasonable unit for that would be years. Okay, could be months, could be days, but, you know, most likely it's years. I don't think I've. All right, our next to the last type variable, or variable and its type, we've got political affiliation, and that is categorical, okay, because um, that just means, you know, Republican, Democrat, liberal, liberal, well, libertarian. Um, independent, Green Party, all of those things. So that would be categorical. And our final variable and its type would be whether or not um, the person voted in the 1998 midterm congressional election. And that would be a yes, no answer. That's going to be categorical. Okay, so that's it for our example and for your video lesson. Um, next class period, you'll be analyzing a whole bunch of these little scenarios and doing a few other things, um, just really getting to know data and how to think about it.